men going down as possible receivers crossed and they almost forced the TCU people to run into each other. So we await the discussion by the officials. Last year, Bud alluded to the fact that Baylor won last year's ball game 56-21. One of the things that happened in that ball game was a tremendous performance by Ralph Stockover, who is the tailback today in place of the starter Ron Francis. The penalty is against TCU on a personal foul, taking the ball to the 48-yard line after the penalty down into TCU territory, where it's the first down for Baylor. By the way, last year, Stockover, who was a non-scholarship freshman, and non-scholarship freshman Derek McAdoo combined for 234 rushing yards and five touchdowns in that ball game last year against TCU. Here we go, first down Baylor. Stockover, and he is piled up near the 46 by Byron Linwood, the strong safety after a gain of about two. This is a play that was called to the outside. Stockman starts to the outside, then hits it and cuts it back against the green. Fortunately, the defensive end held his position, was able to make a clean tackle for a short game. Stockover is from Alma, Arkansas. Junior is rushed for 244 yards coming into this game today. Second down, no score, first quarter, 9.42 to go. Play action, Mickey to the near side, and a fine catch by Horace H., number 23, on the 36th. The coverage by Sean Thomas, number 22, but you can't throw a ball much better than that or have a better reception. Well, it was beautiful execution all the way on both sides. Defense plays it very well, too. You can see the two men crossing. The pattern of the inside man freezes the man trying to cover across. Fine throw, good, inter good completion, first down in the play. Mickey guiding the Baylor Bears and doing an excellent job. This is their second position, and they have moved the ball steadily. First down. Mickey to the near side again, this time intended for Bobby Joe Conrad. And Littles had the coverage. Remember to stay tuned at halftime for the next in our series of Greatest of the Great. Today, UT's Harley Sewell is featured. Greatest of the Great is presented by the Jefferson Pilot Corporation, dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. Mickey is checking signals often at the line of scrimmage. He had a man-for-man -man coverage that time. Conrad against Littles. He checked to the play, but Littles was able to handle his assignment. TCU defense. Not quite coming up. Here comes the blitz, and Mickey gets it away to the far side, incomplete. Horace H. was out there. TCU tries to give you a different look on the defense all the time, don't they? They play a great number of combinations in the defensive secondary, and they also change the spacing every single down so that the offensive team never has the comfort of knowing exactly where they're going to be because they won't be in the same place that they were on the previous play. How can they remember all that? Well, if you're well-coached, well-drilled, uh, it comes sort of uh, second instinct, actually, when you get in the game. Third down, 10. Big down now for the defensive TCU because Baylor has moved the ball steadily on both possessions. And as, again, TCU comes up, shows blitz inside, and Mickey calls a timeout, apparently not liking what he saw. We've got a timeout by Baylor, and we'll be back right after this. I am the footsteps of William Shakespeare along the River Avon. I am a once mighty castle on the shores of Loch Ness. I am a thatched cottage in an old English village. I am British Caledonian Airways. I am the first class way to London. I will serve you the finest European cuisine. You will enjoy the luxury and comfort of a sky lounger's seat and the personal service recognized by many as the finest in the world. I am the best of Great Britain. I am British Caledonian Airways. And goblins gather round the time for chills and thrills. So party down, no matter who you like to fight, you're gonna want Coors and Coors Light tonight. Coors Light beer will be clear, fun is everywhere. Get ready for excitement when Coors is on the scene. Cause anything can happen. On the Coors and Coors Light Halloween. 
Third down coming up for the Baylor Bears. Bud Wilkinson, the Horned Frogs, counted offense, and we know what it can do. It's had one problem today. They've only had the ball for one series. That's right, and on that series, their offensive line was not able to handle the tough defensive linemen. So here is that third down call coming up for the Baylor Bears at the 36-yard line of TCU. Here comes that TCU defense up close. Mickey with time, throws back to the near side, completed on the 30 to Broderick Sargent, the fullback brought down by Byron Linwood. And did he get a first down? He looks a little short. He did a good job of trying to pick up that first down after he made the catch. Watch the play again. Mickey drops straight back, rolls just slightly, looks off to his right, then hits the crossing pattern. The pass is caught easily, but the defense closes. Almost missed the tackle, but they did get him down, and he is short of the first down. It is fourth down and two, and the Bears are going to go for it. They've got two tight ends, Joel Barrett, 88, Gary Ward, number 80. Sargent is the fullback, Stocker the tailback. Fourth down. out of bounds in the 23 by Byron Linwood, the strong safety from Pittsburgh, Texas, who reaps like a linebacker, but Stockerberg got the first down behind the blocking of Mark Cochran, number 63, and Jeff Palmer, who pulled all the way from the left guard spot. Fine execution. The way Mickey runs the play is to take a little step back and go down the line of scrimmage. That gives him a little longer time to lead the defensive men. First down on the 23 of TCU. No score, 8.33 to go in the first quarter. Tom Mickey guard, guiding the Baylor Bears. Junior from Angleton. Off Stockerberg. His tail back. This is what Mickey's done so far. Stockerberg, big hole up the middle, and he is down inside the 20 to near the 17. Bill Tomini, number 98. The sophomore strong tackle made the hit. And the Baylor offensive line seems to dominate the view at this point. We see Spinners, he breaks through the hole as it opened up inside, he moved downfield, finally was tackled, but six yards gained on the play. Second down, four, we got Roderick Sargent at fullback, Stockover at tailback, Bobby Joe Conrad, the split, Glenn Pruitt, the wing back. Stockover, Stockover inside the 15, about the 13, Kent Trammell, number 91, the nose guard who's an outstanding defensive football player, makes the tackle gain of about four and four for first down. Let's see if they make And TCU has, as you pointed out, Merlin, almost everyone very close to the line of scrimmage, and they still are not able to fill quickly enough to keep Baylor from dominating the offensive line of scrimmage with their running attack. So it is third down and short, very short, as Baylor did not make the first down. They bring on Kerry Ward along with Joel Barrett as tight ends as they go to power. Third down. Sergeant hit at the line of scrimmage by Kevin Dean, number seven. Let's see what was spotted. Watch the offensive line. You can see the takeoff of the Baylor lineman to blitz on the blitz able to fill the hole, and we had a very tackle. Stopped them short of the first down. That was Kevin Dean, the defensive end. That being a measurement, he might have picked it up. Any part of the ball will do it. All eyes are on this one. and a recovery by TCU. With seven minutes, eight seconds to go in the first quarter, Jim Wacker's Horn Frogs have had their hands on the football for only three plays and a punt. When you're playing against the number one offensive team in the country, the best defense is to keep the ball as Baylor is doing. So here come the Bears with a first down inside the 15 of TCU. McGee throwing, Mickey completing to Horace Ates, and Ates is inside the five for Garland Littles, number 20. The freshman wrestles him down, a gain of about nine, and we have a flag in the play. That's Horace Ates from Austin LBJ High School. Well, let's see what that penalty is all about. Tom Mickey has been explained to him by the Reverend Wendell Shelton. Baker, coming into this game today, has won two ball games, but the Bears can be the kind of a team that can rise up and bang you around with the penalty is against TC. And roughing the passer called up, I believe. We we'll take at it again. It's the quick outs that are really causing the defense so much trouble. 
Mickey's a front thrower. And he hits eight. He takes an outside break. A stride ahead of the defender. Turns it upfield, and we have another good gain on first down by Baylor. They've been able to do that consistently. I think we have a roughing the passer call against that's Grant Tapp, the Baylor head coach, against Kevin Dean, number 97, who nailed Mickey after he had released the ball. So Jim Wacker uh, has a headache right now here in the first quarter. It's first down and goal to go inside the five-yard line for the Baylor Bears. And we're down to six minutes, 44 seconds to go in the first quarter. The Horned Frogs five and one, two and one in conference play. The Bears are two and four and two and two in conference play. Jay Kelly is now in a team along with Joel Barrett. Stockover is trying to slide outside, just fails to get into the end zone on a nice tackle by Span number 57 and Bill Tomney, number 98, who also got a hand on him. Anytime they're close to the goal line, Baylor goes to the power eye formation. They've been very consistent over the years with the four running backs out of the fry on short yardage and close to the goal line. I believe I miscalled the uh, down on the last play there. It is now a first down goal to go. It was not a first down on the last play after the penalty. Stockmer at tailback. It's been joined by Coach Warrens and the hand uh, handoff goes to Stockmer who is hit and come back. Let's see what he got out of it, if anything. And you can see the way TCU is playing their defense gambling, and we get a penalty flag on the field. I think one of the TCU men probably crossed the line of scrimmage just a little bit too soon, and all he said it was a procedure penalty against Baylor. It cost them five yards. While this is walked off, let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is the Raycom Sports Network. KSAT-TV, Channel 12, San Antonio. Wilkinson with you at Eamon Carter Stadium, where the sun is out. Would you believe it? It rained and rained and rained this morning. And it looked like we should start this game in rain. But right now, everybody is happy. It's homecoming at TCU. And who wants to have a wet homecoming day? You're right. We got a change of personnel for base. First down on the one, they would have stayed in the power set. But now it's down on the six. So they go back into their normal offensive pattern. And again, something's wrong. And Mickey has to take a second time. Offensive team did not get the signal back. Conrad and Pruitt. And that's Pruitt in motion. Conrad is a split end. McGee's got Stockover wide open. Nobody even close to him. And I saw Gary Spann, number 57, the linebacker, shake his hands in disgust and disgusted. It might have been his coverage. I think it was. Man for man coverage, definitely. So it's man for man on the linebacker who's supposed to go with the receiver does not go with him. It's an easy throw, and in this case, an easy score. So the Bears are on the board first this afternoon as Ralph Stockover picks up the touchdown on a six-yard pass reception. And Marty Jimerson will be coming on for the extra point try. It'll be held by Clark, number 15. And Jimerson pops it right through the upright. So the Bears Touchdown play. You see Mickey dropping back. Stockemeyer simply wears out of the backfield. It was man for man pass defense. The linebacker rushed the passer, did not cover Stockemeyer, who is wide open to score. So the Bears go up by a score of 7 0 with 5 minutes and 35 seconds to go in the first period. And we'll see what puts it here five times in the Southwest Conference. That drive, 74 yards, 14 plays. They had a big drive going the first possession, but fumbled the ball away. And they kept it for five minutes and five seconds, and there's 535 to go in the first period. Red the ball, excuse me, eight minutes and five seconds against a minute 20. That's unbelievable. You saw Tony Jefferson for 27 in the middle. And it's good Jeffrey having the ball clear the end zone. That'll go down to the 30-yard line. One thing we see you on the returns is the burners back there. Clint Brown, Tony Jeffrey, Roscoe Tate. So now we'll see what uh, will happen when we... See T2 on the offense for the second time. First of all, we have a flag back at the point of the kickoff. So I hope we're not starting one of those days. So far, we're going to get that fourth penalty called. Apparently, TCU will take the ball at the 30-yard line, refusing the penalty. Don't think he took it over the end line again. <laughs> no. Anthony Gully, number 11, will be at quarterback. 
Davis, 36. Tony Jeffries, 37 of the running backs. Dan Sharp splitting to the left side. And James Manus, the speedster to the right. Here we go. On the beer and the pitch. Davis having two getting yardage and one getting nothing. Ray Perry, the weak side linebacker, number 57 in Los Everett. The weak side safety came up to make the hit off, but said he got nothing. He runs a pure beer offense, triple option. Their quarterback reads the play defensive people much more than most teams that are using the beer today. However, thus far, there hasn't been much to read because the offense line has been nominated by Baylor defensive men. Second down, 10 for TCU at the 30. 7 to nothing for first quarter. Gully rolling and throwing and incomplete. James Manus, the outstanding All Southwest Conference receiver a year ago, and a lot of All-America teams will probably be placing his name on the roster this year. It's third down 10 for the Horned Frogs, who have not been able to get the offense going in this, the second position on the offense here in the first quarter. The Gully has been hitting 70% of his passes coming into this game. TCU would prefer to run it, but uh, the way the Baylor defense is playing, they're going to have to throw some to loosen them up. Third down 10. He looks back the other way and completes his pass to Dan Sharp, the flex in, and Jack Hurd, the strong safety number. Take a look at the play again. The fans thought that he had picked up the first down. It's a crossing pattern. Man-for-man -man pass defense. He has to turn back to get the ball. He's hit hard, quickly. Doesn't get quite enough yardage, and TCU is forced to punt. James Gargas, the senior from Mesquite, will kick it away. His punting average, 39.7, and he kicks this one downfield. Not too high, but he's got pretty good yardage on it. Thomas Everett on the return for Baylor. Everett brings it out across the 30 to the 32. Fine return. Clinton Brown, number 24, made the tackle to hang time. 3.79, a punt of 48 yards and a return of 19. And the Baylor Bears are coming up with pretty good field position. Next week, Raycom and the Southwest Conference have another exciting matchup. These same TCU Horned Frogs, the number one offensive team in the country, face the first place Houston Cougars, who beat SMU a week ago, to take the conference lead. That's TCU at Houston next Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Central Time on all of these Raycom stations. And the number one offensive team in the country has yet to make a first down. So the Baylor Bears uh, are turning on the defense. No doubt about it. They've, they have really done a job in TCU's first two possessions. As Stockmer goes up the middle, shy of the 35. Bill Tomedy, number 98. The sophomore from Westchester High at Houston on the tackle. Let's see what's going on elsewhere around the country today. At Wisconsin, the Buckeyes and the Badgers are scoreless in the second. Oklahoma State, boy, they've come up with a very good football team this year. And this is a surprise. Boston College supposed to defeat Rutgers. Georgia, Kentucky, Georgia, and the lead in the first quarter. Douglas and eight, so the wideouts now for the Baylor Bears. Second down, eight. Mickey throwing, uh-oh, intended for Douglas. And over there on the coverage was Sean Thomas, number 22, and that was a danger. A dangerous situation there. We watch Mickey as he fakes to Stockmeyer and then rolls it out on a bootleg. The play is well defended. The pass is on target. Douglas might have been able to catch it, but once again, I believe that Sun was right in his eyes. Tom Mickey of the Baylor Bears, 7 out of... 12 for 67 yards and a touchdown. Bears leading 7 to nothing. 317 to go in the first quarter. And a third down. Third down and nine coming up. Mickey right over the middle, and he completes it for a first down to Leland Douglas, number 17, and Billy Oliver, the right cornerback, making the tackle. A big gainer right over the middle to number 17, Leland Douglas. We take a look at the play again, and uh, this was, as you said, a very important first down. Douglas on the crossing pattern. It's man-for-man -man pass defense. He beats the defender, is able to make the catch, and picks up the needed first down. 14 yards on the play. First down for the Bears. This quarter has belonged to Baylor. No doubt about it.
Mickey on the option to Stockamer. Stockamer runs out of turf over there. Out of bounds near the midfield stripe. Bill Tomini, number 98. The 6'4", 242 pounder, the strong tackle. Chased him out of bounds. And Trammell and those guard uh, made such a quick charge on that play that I thought he was really had jumped offside. He's got very fast reflexes, uh, excellent nose guard. 6'2", 266 pounds, but quick. Second down, six. The ball on the 48-yard line of TCU. In a slot left motion. The pitch goes back to Stockamer. Stockamer misses the first down marker, I believe, as he was chased out of bounds, just missing. Kevin Dean, number 97, the defensive end, made the tackle. Bob Hearn, number 61, the right guard, was leading the blocking. Linebackers are the key to the defense. This is Span, TCU, fighting off the block, then moving to the outside. And it's fortunate that he was able to break through that blocking man because he was a man instrumental in stopping them from a long, long game. And I'd given the credit for the tackle to 97. Dean, he missed it. Span, as you mentioned, picked him up. Third down and very short. First down as Derek McAdoo gets his first call of the afternoon. Coming in as the tailback. Down inside the 40 to the 38. We have two minutes and 38 seconds left to play in the first quarter. A gain of four by McAdoo. Byron Linwood, the strong safety, who plays like a linebacker. Boy, he really hits. He's 6'3", 200 pounds. McAdoo had a big game last year against TCU. And the TCU defense certainly being dominated. Uh, they're trying everything, all kinds of stunts, bringing the secondary up. Baylor has been very poised offensively, throwing when they need to, but being dominant with their running attack. And they have made 10 first downs already in the first quarter. Todd Connor is down as a fullback. Mac, uh, Mickey is going for all of it. And back there on the coverage was Billy Jones, but his intended receiver, Bobby Joe Conrad, fell down at about the 20-yard line. When Conrad fell down, I don't think that he was knocked down because we didn't get any signal. We take a look at it again. Here he is coming down the field. He takes it to the outside, and when he's hit, he didn't expect to be hit, but in college football, you're clear to do that. Professional football, once you're four and a half yards downfield, you can't be touched, but he was caught off balance, knocked down, pass incomplete. Second and 10 on the 38 of TCU. Todd Connor at fullback, Derek McAdoo at tailback now for Baylor. Little play action. Mickey, incomplete, we're gonna get a flag. Intended for Bobby Joe Conrad, and Garland Little's number 20 was all over him. You get a little desperate when they're moving the ball on you as efficiently as Baylor is. We have two minutes, three seconds to go in the first quarter. The pass interference call against Garland Littles, the freshman. And let's take a look at it again. You can see that there's no particular pressure on Mickey. He's got a lot of time, some hands up, but they don't bother him any. And there's the hit before the ball gets to Conrad and properly called pass interference. So the ball at the 27-yard line. Baylor leading 7-0. Little explanation uh, being made on the sideline to uh, Jim Wacker. It's the first down anytime you have pass interference. Ball right now, resting on the 27-yard line of TCU. And this time it is Connor the fullback. Connor sliding up his right tackle down to about the 20-yard line where Billy Jones, the free safety, hits him after a gain of about seven. Connor missed the A&M game last week with an injury. In fact, uh, McAdoo, who is now the tailback, was the leading rusher last week against A&M, filling in for uh, Ron Francis, uh, who missed the ball game with a hamstring pull. I think he did a fine job in the previous play of thinking that he was running a bootleg after he had handed the ball off to Connor. Kept the TCU defense separated. Douglas splits to the right, H to the left. The tailback, McAdoo. McAdoo stopped before he can hit the 15-yard line with a minute 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Kent Trammell, 91, the nose tackle, making the stop. Jeff Palmer is playing the left guard today for the injured Joel Porter. Uh, Porter. Palmer is number 71. He plays everywhere. Mark Addix also outstanding blocker at center and they uh, gave the ball carrier enough room to get 
possibly the first down. We'll find out in a moment. This first half has been a Baylor show. First down, Bears. One of the things that Baylor has done, too, in monopolizing the ball, uh, Bud, they have neutralized this crowd. <laughs> well, it's hard to be enthusiastic when you're the number one offensive team in the country, and in the first quarter you have the ball only two minutes and 54 seconds. Connor and McAdoo are the running backs. Douglas and Pruitt are the wideouts. Slot left. First and ten. McAdoo gets inside the 15 by a little bit. Bill Tomini, 98, who's making an awful lot of tackles here in this first quarter, is on the hit. Gary, uh, Gary Spann coming up there to see what he can do to help out. And we're down to 47 seconds in counting in the first quarter. Total, total domination thus far by Baylor. Paul Jones is now coming in at a defensive end spot for TCU on second down and eight. Mickey on the pitch to his tailback McAdoo, and he really gets nailed on the corner by Darren Turner, number 93. McAdoo got the, was the, felt the brunt of the best tackle by this defensive unit today. That time the defense has everything handled in good shape. Every one of the option men taken care of and no gain on the play. So it is third down and nine coming up and look at this hit. Bang. Dean putting the finishing touches on. Good old fashioned Oklahoma gang tackle. We've run out of time in the first quarter. And the Baylor Bears are leading by a score of seven to nothing. We'll be back with the start of the second quarter after this message from a word. First quarter. And we open the second quarter in a third down nine for Baylor on the 16-yard line of TCU. Mickey under a rush, being chased, throws it back over the middle and completes a pass to Todd Connor, his fullback, and Linwood really nailed him. We've been told Linwood was a tough football player coming into the game, but boy, he is a hitter. 6'2", 205 pounds as we watch it again. Mickey being pressured this time. One of the few times he's been pressured, he falls back, throws it to Connor, who makes a fine reception, gets by the first man, and bingo, Linwood really unloads on him. And that's a hard way to make three yards. It is fourth down and five coming up. And the field goal unit is on with Marty Jimerson. This will be a 29-yard attempt. The holder is Clark Hood, number 15. Jimerson... Houston Stratford High School fires away, and his kick is good. So, Baylor goes up by 10 to nothing. And we have just started the second quarter. And when you realize that uh, this TCU team going into this game was number one in the country in rushing offense, and averaged 507 yards a game, pardon me, total offense, 570 yards a game, 339 yards a game rushing offense, and they're leading the country in scoring, and in the first quarter, they have the ball 2 minutes and 54 seconds and make a total of 7 yards. Quite a contrast. Remember to stay tuned to the end of the ball game when we'll be picking a Curtis Mathis player of the game. Curtis Mathis, a little more expensive, but well worth it. Well, TCU will give it another shot. They've had the ball twice offensively. Baylor has been able to stop him each time back in the first quarter. Now we start the second quarter. Jim Mueller is going to be kicking off for Baylor. Clinton Brown, number 24. Tony Jeffrey, 27, Roscoe Tatum, number 33, are all deep for the Baylor Bears. Clinton Brown, boy, you talk about it, you're just looking at him, 24. He had an 81-yard return against SMU and has a 24.9 kickoff return average. Everybody that touches the ball in the TCU backfield has got remarkable speed and they're Statistics are so impressive. Davis is averaging 8.4 yards per carry. Jeffrey, 6.4. The quarterback, Gully, is averaging 4 yards a carry. The whole team, 6.2. And that ball is going to be handled by Tony Jeffrey. TCU needs a big return, but they won't get it on this one, as Jeffrey has really nailed it about the 18-yard line. A return of 12 yards as the Baylor Bears react. And we can see a very good job of covering the kick. Number 74 is moving downfield fast. He's outrunning the rest of the people. Runs right straight through the blocker and then really unloads his 
the TCU team had trouble deciding which man was going to actually catch the kickoff. And so it's been a little frustrating. Robert Waters had that final jolt there, the business major from Fort Worth for the Baylor Bears. He's a rover back on the defensive unit. First and 10 for the TCU Horn Frogs. The ball at the 18-yard line in Frog territory. Mike Flynn will be up over the ball. Joe Young uh, and Tommy Sheehan are the guards. Steve Page and James Benson are the tackles. And we've got a little discussion on on the near sideline. Pat Coriette and Steve Grumbine have come in to play the tackle spots. We've got a problem with the clock, apparently. And somewhere we've lost eight seconds. 13.45 showing on the clock. And TCU wants those eight seconds back mm -hmm. when you're behind 10 to nothing. And that they are, first of all, a six-yard touchdown pass from Tom Mickey to Ralph Stockhammer in the first quarter. And then Jimerson's field goal here in the second period. Grant Taff, he said, hey, sunshine on me. Everything's great. Jim Wacker said, I'd like to have a little of that sun shining on me right now. And I mean more than what's coming from upstairs. Jim just uh, received a new extension on his contract. Seven years now for Jim Wacker here at TCU. He is, he's brought not only an enthusiasm to the football program, but he's brought, brought an enthusiasm to the entire university. Motivation and uh, everything going. We look at the Baylor drive. Again, great ball possession. 13 plays, 56 yards, and four minutes and 52 seconds before Jimerson kicked the field goal. Gully dropping. Gully's got a man open, but there's a flag on the play. Keith Burnett, number 84, was out there. Ronnie Thompson had the coverage, and he got behind him, but a flag goes down at the 32-yard line, kind of where that pass play started to uh, take off with the receiver and the defensive back, and let's see if somebody got bumped. Well, Burnett certainly had him beat, and we can see a defensive holding call. So Ronnie Thompson, indeed, who had the coverage on the play, is guilty of holding. And TCU, so far, this has been the best offensive play they've had. He didn't hold him well enough because he went right past him. <laughs> right now, the situation's still being discussed. I started to say a moment ago, even on the kickoff return, TCU needs the big play. Wait a minute. He's calling it offensive holding instead of defensive holding, I believe. But when we see the signal that he gives, no, it's not. It's a defensive holding. And the penalty is marked off. So 10 yards on the, on the penalty. And a first down. They were holding the markers over there. If it's a 10-yard penalty, it better be a first down. <laughs> you got to be able to count better than that to have any doubt whatsoever. Automatic first down. TCU's first first down of the day. And on a penalty. Kenneth Davis, 36. Second leading rusher in the nation. 861 yards, but a, an unbelievable 8.4 yard per carry average. This is Gully on the option, and Gully... Look at that defense react. And that is Steve Grumbine, who just came in to replace Paul Mergenhagen at a tackle, getting help from Jackie Bell, number two, the right quarterback, coming up on the hit, and they get very little of anything. And when Gully starts down the line of scrimmage, uh, you have the whole Baylor defense converging on him, and as you can see, then there really isn't anybody that he can see to run an option against because there are too many people there, and they're dominating the line of scrimmage. Steve Grumbine from nearby Irving, Texas, attending MacArthur High School. Second down, nine on the 29. Nothing there. Steve Grumbine again, number 77. Derek Turner, 81. Also in there on the hit, along with Irvin Randall, number 49. And we look at Grumbine, number 77, simply slipping the blocker, making the tackle of Gully from behind, and the defensive tackles of Baylor are dominating the offensive guards of TCU. Baumkamp, Mergenhagen, Grumbine, and Coriat. Split the time equally, so they're always fresh, and thus far they've been awfully effective. So the Bruise brothers are at work this afternoon. TCU has not converted on a third down yet today, and this is third down nine. Gully gets a good block to swing outside, and he's got enough daylight to get the first down, and he just makes it. Jack Hurd, number 16, the strong safety, tripped him up. But Gully was looking at the stick on the far side. He got it up for the first down. They'll mark the ball at about the 40-yard line. And it's the second first down of the day for the Horn Frogs. Number 38, Manus, is the best receiver, probably certainly the fastest man on the CCU team. You can see how well 
the defense adjusted to pick him up, and this is what enabled Gully to have so much room to run. He saw the receivers were covered, turned it upfield, and before the support can get there, Gully is able to slip forward for the first down. Gully on a drop to throw and first down. Back over the middle, he's got a receiver, and that's Burnett, number 84, Ronnie Thompson, the coverage. And it's a gain of 23 yards approximately at the 38-yard line of the Baylor Bears. And finally, the TCU offense is starting to get on track. And let's take a look at it again. You can see Gully back. Does not get any pressure. He's able to hit Burnett on the crossing pattern. The coverage man, man-for-man -man coverage, was just two steps late getting there. Baylor leading 10 to nothing, 11.54 to go in the first half. Tony Jeffrey is back in as a running back now along with Kenneth Davis. That's Jeffrey on the handoff getting very little. Pat Corey at number 40, Steve Grumby, number 77 on the hit after about two. The ball will be spotted on the 35. I don't believe they've made any yardage to speak of on any of their basic offensive plays. Their veer triple option has been stopped cold at the line each time by Baylor. You mentioned those very strong tackles that Baylor has. They've got four excellent tackles in Greg Baumkamp, number 76, Paul Mergenhagen, number 79. Then they bring in Corey at 40 and Grumby in 77, and they don't drop off in performance at all. This time it's Davis maybe getting that first down as Thomas Everett, number 27, who leads the tacklers with 34, getting him after about a nine-yard pickup. And this is the first time that Gully has been able to have a good read. You can see Davis, as Gully pulls the ball back out, Davis is able to slip it around to the outside, get it turned upfield, and pick up the first down on the play. So Davis, who will no doubt go over the 1,000-yard mark, either possibly today or next week, gets the first down of the 27. 10 minutes, 57 seconds to go in the first half. TCU trailing 10 to nothing. Gully completes it. He hits Dan Sharp. The flex in. He is brought down by Johnny Subia, number 12, the weak side safety. A gain of about eight as Dan Sharp from Bernie, Texas, on the receiving end of that Gully pass. Gully is very quick. That's the ball was thrown about two counts after Gully got it from the center. and. Uh, he was able to hit Manus quickly, or sharp rather. Second down, they're going to give uh, seven yards officially. Second down, three for TCU. Davis, first down and more. He's on the way. He's in there. Touchdown. play they're hitting it to the outside rather than inside and that stretch is opened up for Davis the last two times Davis has scored his ninth rushing touchdown of the year so the offense finally gets on track to be Ken Ozzy to try for the extra point John Denton will be holding Ozzy right through the middle and the Horn Frogs are on with an 82 yard drive at eight plays and we can watch the touchdown again see the handoff but see how Davis hits it to the outside he's going outside the tackle rather than inside of him he found good daylight broke it upfield into the clear into the end zone and when you've had a disappointing first quarter as Gully has had and the TCU offense not moving at all you're a little happy when something good happens and you can see the entire team here cheering so things pick up on an 84 yard drive by TCU Baylor leading at 10 to 7 and we'll be back right after this. John, a senior from Dallas. Very impressive drive, Coach. It sure was. They passed well enough to open it up, and then breaking the handoff to the outside rather than inside was the key play. On the near sideline, it'll be Derek McAdoo at about the 8-yard line on the return, and he goes down at about the 12. Coaches always talk about the kickoff returns. If you fake them and try to go laterally, if it breaks, it breaks the big, big yardage. But if you don't break it, then you're moving laterally instead of up the field. And this return did gain four yards, but they're well backed up. 12-yard line. That man being honored right there in the middle is number 47, Romeo Smith, who made that tackle. And the very impressive drive at TCU, only eight plays, going 82 yards. That's 
in a normal average per play, and it only took them three minutes and 25 seconds. Now we're going to see what this TCU defense can do. Mickey wants a big one. He's got a man out there, and it is Horace Ates. And Ates is up to midfield and down to the 47-yard line of TCU. And that's the last thing in the world that Jim Wacker wanted to happen to that defense on that 40-yard pickup. Well, Ates did a very good job of looking the ball in. Mickey dropping back. And this is an excellent throw. He arches the ball. Ates looks it, comes in with it, hits him right on the numbers. The defender almost overran it. But Littles was able to adjust and make the tackle, but it was a big gain on the play. First down on the 47-yard line of TCU. Pruitt and Douglas are the wideouts. Mickey runs the option. Mickey breaks it back up the middle for first down, getting almost 12 on the play. Billy Jones, number one, the free safety, making the tackle. And once again, Jeff Palmer, who plays everywhere on the line, offensively comes up with a play there that is going to get him a couple of points when the coaches grade out the films on the previous play span shot the gap but the play went to the opposite side so he was a wasted man when your linebacker shoots and they run away from you you aren't able to help in the pursuit andy pitch number 49 comes in as a linebacker now for the tcu horn frogs he's the swing man he'll go either the weak side or the left side McAdoo and Sargent of the running backs. Mickey going to Sargent. And Sargent, no place to go. He's on the sidelines. Billy Jones, number one, the free safety after him. And again, excellent defensive reaction by the entire team. They picked up the man hitting on the fake. They handled the quarterback, forced him to pitch, and then had three people on the tackle. The rushing game in this first half has really been held down. The rushing game of TCU has really been held down by the Baylor defense. Davis, 42 yards, Jeffrey, 2, and Gully, 12, and that's been it. Here come the Baylor Bears on a second and 10 after no game. Play action. Mickey, man open. That's Barrett, and Barrett has another first down. He is all the way down to about the 20-yard line, maybe inside the 20. Let's see where they mark it. Right now, we're going to call it an 18-yard pickup or thereabouts with Garland Littles, number 20, the quarterback, on the coverage. And the pass defense uh, has not been well executed by TCU. They're not unable to get a good rush on Mickey. His protection is excellent. He's throwing the ball accurately. The defensive secondary is just a little bit slow on their man-for-man -man coverages, and the receivers are open. And Joel Barrett was hoping, oh, he was hoping he could get all the way into the end zone. He has never scored a touchdown in his collegiate career. First down, inside the 20 of TCU. The show blitz, here they come. McAdoo. McAdoo near the 10-yard line, the flag is down. Paul Jones, 82, gets the tackle on the play. About a seven-yard pickup, but we'll have to wait and see what the flag means. When the blitz is coming and you have the draw play call, you're guessing correctly. Holding, offense. Big, big penalty. Well, Grant Taft's team jumped out to a 10 nothing lead, completely dominating play in the first quarter. And then an 82-yard drive by the Texas Christian Horn Frogs netted a touchdown, extra point. 10-7 Baylor, the ball marched back to the 29. So the holding call cost the Bears, and they will have a first and 20 coming up. And number 14, Carlson, is getting the play from the offensive coordinator sometimes from Coach Teff, and is signaling it in to Mickey, who is the quarterback in the game. Slot right for the Bears. First and 20. Mickey throwing to the near side. He's got Pruitt, and Pruitt is rustled out of bounds near the 23 by Garland Littles, number 20, the freshman, who was red-shirted last year, and Jim Wacker has a lot of red shirts playing on his team this year. Pruitt and Conrad are the two wide receivers. They're on the same side, as you see. They go downfield. Pruitt breaks it to the outside, while Conrad breaks it to the inside. Pruitt gets open for a moment, but is hit hard, and it's a short gain in the play, only six yards. Second down, 14. We have nine minutes left to play in the first half. Baylor leading 10 to seven, in possession on the TCU 23. Second down is the call. Douglas and Eights are the wideouts. outs. 
Mitchie. That's Douglas. And Douglas has a first down. He'll have a first and goal to go. The ball marked at about the three. They're really picking on Garland Littles. A gain of about 19 on that one. And Douglas ran a fine pass pattern. And once again, Mickey put the ball right on target. You can see Douglas moving downfield. A little bit of an inside fake. And then a break to the outside. Littles was not able to stay with him on the man-for-man -man coverage. He recovers enough to make the tackle. But it's first down, Baylor. At the three. <laughs> That's Matt Clark over there, excited about something. Kobe Forns, number 34, and Derek McAdoo will be the running backs, or will be joining in the running back area. That's Eights also back there. The handoff goes to the wing back, Eights, and Eights is at about the two-yard line where you stacked up. So Baylor running out of the power eye. Gerald Taylor, number 37, the strong linebacker from South Oak Cliff High School in Dallas on the hit for TCU. And Baylor continues to dominate time of possession and also dominate the TCU defense. So the Bears have done very little wrong today except fumbling on the first drive that they had going, turning the ball over to TCU and then stopping the Frogs after three plays and causing a punt. They came right back and marched for a touchdown. Eights and Forns in there. This time the dive up over the top goes to Derek McAdoo and he is stopped near the one by Gerald Taylor to 37 who was in there on the last tackle. He replaced Kyle Clifton, who's now with the New York Jets. So he had a, some big shoes to fill. And a good shot of how the goal line defense, if they get penetration and you get poor ball handling, it doesn't enable the ball carrier to hit as quickly as he would like to. Play has very little chance of picking up a great deal of yardage. And while Taylor made the tackle, Span did a great job filling the hole there. Third down, coming up and goal to go. Flags go down as the play gets underway. Needless to say, all the fingers are being pointed uh, by the TCU anyway. The only one that's important is the official. <laughs> yeah, they, they point the other way. It was those guys. Hey, Mr. Ref, it was those guys. Remember? A procedure call against Baylor. Seven minutes, 27 seconds to go in the first quarter. Now things a little bothersome here for Grant Taft. He had that ball down on the one. With the two downs to put it in the end zone also. Now it's back at the six-yard line, and Ralph Stockover is back in as the tailback for Baylor. And Baylor has had five penalties, TCU only two. Yardage about the same. Kobe Forn's the fullback. They had to move into a fullback spot. He has played tight end. Uh, Todd Connor was out last week. Connor's been in a couple of plays today, but Forn's is in there as a fullback. McKay stumbling, goes down for a yard loss. Linwood, number 35, the strong safety, and Gary Spann, 57, followed him all the way across the field to get him down. I said a yard loss. I beg your pardon. He picked up enough yardage to make it on the put the ball on the two-yard line, where it is fourth down and goal to go. And that's the big thing. He didn't put it in the end zone. <laughs> and we're getting a look over at the sidelines. Do we try to make the touchdown, or are we going to go for another field goal? And Grant Teff still has not made up his mind. You see the play here as they knocked him out of bounds. He stumbled for that five-yard pickup. Fourth down and goal coming up, and we'll be right back after this word from Toyota. Down and goal to go for the Baylor Bears. The Bears leading it 10 to 7. They are out of timeouts. They're, they also don't have uh, 11 men on the field. Uh, they were one player short, and they're going to have a hard time getting the ball off. As we... They are indeed. They're going to go for it on fourth down. that you control everything. You can't afford to blow it away as they did that time. Out of timeouts and very close to violating the 25-second count. Davis and Jeffrey are the running backs. TCU 97 yards away. And Davis, look at him go. Second and third efforts out to the nine. Kevin Hancock, 50, the middle linebacker. Robert Waters, 44, the strong linebacker. On the stop as Davis 
Gets that ball out of the danger area, out near the nine-yard line, where it becomes second down and three. And each time that they have hit that handoff up the beer, and he's broken it outside of the tackle, they picked up good yardage. Davis and Jeffrey are the backs. Gully goes down, but he didn't have the football. Mergenhagen comes up, uh, or he did have the football. Mergenhagen comes up on the tackle. And the ball is spotted at about the seven. Mergenhagen has got better eyes than I have. Third down five coming up. Remember to stay tuned at halftime for the next of our series, Greatest of the Great. Today, it's UT's Harvey Sewell. Uh, Greatest of the Great is presented by the Jefferson Pilot Corporation, dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. TCU trailing on a third down and four coming up. They're trailing 10-7 and Manus, the receiver, but Johnny Thomas on the coverage and Manus could not hold on to the football. I believe that he could have made the catch. It was well enough thrown. I think he was too anxious to turn and start running with the ball. So the Horn Frogs are faced with a punting situation, and James Gargas comes in to kick it. Thomas Everett will be back deep for the Baylor Bears, who lead it 10 to 7. We have five minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first half. Gargas with a 39-7 average. Gargas has had trouble in he, he has out kicked coverage so much. They've tried to get him to get that ball up in the air, even if he gets up distance. And he does this time to the 49-yard line. Here's Everett on the return. Everett inside the 40, Everett down to about the 38. of 41 yards, a return of 13, and a hang time of 3.8. And we'll be back after this word from the Jefferson Pilot. Has great field position and a 10 to 7 lead. Let's talk for just a moment, Bud Wilkinson, about the hang time. We've clocked twice now, under four. What are they looking for? Well, when he's kicking it that long and it's under four, there's no way you can possibly cover it. You've got to have a hang time of about 4.5 to kick it that far and not have a good return. Mickey on play action, throwing to the near side and completes it to Todd Connor as fullback and Connor is out of bounds outside the 15 yard line a gain of about 22 Sean Thomas 22 finally chased him out of bounds and anytime the swing back is out of the backfield TCU does not have a linebacker on him <clears throat> Connor swinging again no pressure on Mickey Connor wide open swung to the outside and then breaks it down the sidelines it's man for man pass defense so there's no quick support Finally, TCU defenders do get over to make the tackle, but it's a big game. Matt Clark, a freshman from Corsicana, split wide to the left for Baylor on first down. This time the swing goes to Ralph Stockover. Ball was kind of thrown behind him, and Billy Oliver, number 23, had the coverage on the play. You mentioned the fact, Bud Wilkinson, that uh, about the coverage when the linebackers are not covering those backs coming out of the backfield. Now, Baylor must have done a pretty good, well, we know they always do good scouting jobs on <laughs> right. the opposition, but it looks like they have set their passing game plan to uh, take advantage of that. Well, TCU is feeling that they've got to get extra support quickly from their linebackers because Baylor's running attack has been so dominant. When the linebackers are shooting, they can't cover the pass receiver at the same time. Mickey, the option. Mickey inside the 15, yanked down at about the 14 by Kevin Dean, number 97. And we take another look at the play. Mickey has run the option extremely well and has made yardage almost every time. But this time, Dean, the end, makes a fine play. Looked like he could cover the ladder if he had to. Mickey tried to turn it up the field. There was no daylight there. And Dean tried to strip that ball, it appeared, also. Third down eight coming up after a gain of two. The ball on the 14-yard line of TCU. Baylor leading 10 to 7. 4.30 left to play in the first half. Connor and Stockhammer are the backs. Play action. Mickey, time. Mickey throwing for the end zone. Throws it out of the end zone. Good coverage by Byron Linwood on Bobby Joe Conrad. And it looked like Mickey read that very well and just cranked up and fired the ball over everybody. It was a uh, fake of the draw play. That froze the linebackers a little bit. Conrad starts down the field, and you can see he gives a little shuffle step, then breaks it to the outside. The pass is a little late getting there, and even though he had the defender beaten momentarily, by the time the ball got there, no chance to make the catch. So Jemerson, who has kicked a 24-yard field goal, will be going from the 21, add 10 to that. A 31-yard effort here by Marty Jemerson, who started the season in the, like the fourth team unit. And his distance is good, and it's between the uprights. So Jemerson gets his second field goal of the day. And Baylor moves up to a 13-7 lead with 4-19 left to play. <laughs> Curtis Mathis 
monitors. They supply our monitors for the games, and they're really outstanding. A little more expensive, but worth it. And we appreciate them, and we hope that you do too. All right, it is 13 to 7 with Baylor leading. Baylor's kickoff is going to go out of bounds. 12 yard line where it goes out, so TCU will request, I would assume anyway, another kick. You take that five yard penalty and hope that the covering team is going to be a little bit out of breath and won't cover quite as fast as they did the previous time. Well, this, this is what Baylor did on the last drive. Five plays, 24 yards, and had the ball a minute, and Jimerson kicked his 31-yard field goal. He had a 29-yard field goal earlier. I started to say on the last uh, kickoff, too, bud, that uh, TCU needs a, they need a big return. They, they've, they've, they've just uh, been uh, uh, a little bit, uh, I don't want to say lethargic, because, I'm, well, maybe I will. Baylor has made them that way, in a sense, because they haven't had the football. Okay. They, have, they have not been able to come up with a great big play to really explode this thing. They had the one good drive, but uh, they've had poor field position on the uh, exchange of possession. First time on the 27, the next time on the 30, and then they had it on the 18 and then the 3. So you uh, have a long way to go. They were able to put one drive together, and maybe a good return here will start them off right. Jim Mueller, and this one is going to come up a little bit short for Clinton Brown. Now let's see what Brown can do. Just couldn't quite get to the outside, but you've got to give a lot of credit to John Simpson, number 13, and Jim Mueller, who went up there to make the tackle after a return of 18 yards, and TCU will have the football on the 31 of the Horned Frogs. He's Clint a very strong ball carrier. He ran right through three or four men, and those Baylor people are determined. They hit, they got good balance, and he still had the strength to overpower them. Coriat and Grumbine have come back in at tackles again as uh, Baumkamp and Mergenhagen are getting a rest. Pass to the near side. Completed to Dan Sharp, the flex end, and we're looking at Scarapa, number 10, the senior from San Antonio Clark High School. So we're going to see now what Scarapa can do. He gets a six-yard pass completion on his first possession. Jack Hurd, the strong safety, coming up to make the tackle. Scarapa started the season. He was injured in the Utah State game. He had won the starting job. Scarapa has completed 45% uh, of his passes, 174 yards going into this game. Quick hand off in the dive to Kenneth Davis, and he gets a shoulder that belongs to Ray Berry, 57, the weak side linebacker, and is stopped in the 40-yard line. Got about three, but they, they're third down and short now. And they haven't been able to get the second and third option going at all. When they run the handoff play, or the first of the three triple option plays, there's never been anything for the quarterback on the outside to either keep or pitch. We're nearing the three-minute mark to go in the first half, and this time Scarapa on the option. He pitches it to Davis. Davis may be on the way. Here he goes. That time they got the pitch. <laughs> point with OZ and that that's the big play we're talking about about getting this offense to explode three plays 60 yards on the carry by Davis the extra point is good and we're at two minutes and 59 seconds to go in the first half TCU has taken the lead over Baylor 14 to 13. Scarafas comes off the handoff fake makes a very late pitch you can see how the Baylor defense was closing there's no one there. It now becomes a foot race, and Davis has just got amazing speed down that sideline. That's why he's averaging 8.4 yards per carry for the season. There's nobody going to catch him. He's big, strong, 5'10", 210, and very fast. Let's take a look at it again. This time we're on Davis all the way. You can see how late the pitch was. The halfback, cornerback rather, was already up, almost getting in to take care of the lateral play. And once Davis has daylight, maybe there's nobody going to get him. So Davis, the junior from Temple, Texas, is now over 100 yards for the day. 104 yards here in this first half. An explosive attack. <laughs> wow. So the first half, which had been very frustrating for TCU. I don't think they've had the ball uh, a total of five minutes in the first half. It, 
be very close to that anyway, and uh, yet they've been able to put two touchdowns on the board, even though in the first quarter they were totally dominated by the Baylor defense. Well, that frustration is gone now, at least for the time being. Let's see if they can stop the Baylor Bears, who have two minutes, 59 seconds, to do something here in the first half to get back into the lead. There's the drive, 69 yards, capped by that 60-yard touchdown run. That ball will come out to the 20. It did bounce to the end zone. And if he hadn't been kicking it on the angle across the field, it would have been through the end zone. Two weeks from today, Ray Com and the Southwest Conference have a dandy for you. The first place Houston Cougars and Coach Bill Yeoman travel to Austin to face the Longhorns of Fred Akers. It's the third ranked Longhorns and the first place Cougars two weeks from today, November 10th at 11.30 a.m. Central Time on the Ray Com Southwest Conference Game of the Week. First down on the Baylor 20. And the TCU defense has forced Baylor to kick two field goals, which means they haven't been totally porous. Davis has had five carries of over 50 yards this year. That last one, 60. Tom Mickey, man wide open. Great catch by Matt Clark, the freshman, dumped by Byron Linwood. 24 yards on the play. And you have to feel that uh, TCU has got to do something to put more pressure on the passer than they've been able to do thus far. Mickey's had plenty of time to throw the ball. Matt Clark, number eight, 5'10", 191, was the starting quarterback for Corsicana last year when they lost in the Class A 4A finals to Fort Bend. First down on the 44. Stockover. The defense reacts. No gain. Gerald Taylor, number 37, making the hit for TCU. And this is a good defensive charge by the TCU line and span the linebacker, number 57. Reads the play, comes off the block, and is in on the tackle, and that's the kind of support you need to get from your linebackers if you're going to stop the running attack. And also, got to get them out there to cover those swing men on the passes. You know, but I'm really impressed with the way Baylor comes back. After that big touchdown run by Davis, they come right back, Pick up big yardage. They're in good field position. Two minutes, five seconds to go. Mickey, right over the middle. Man wide open. That's Clark again. Clark trying to bust it to the outside. Brought down on the 38-yard line by Garland Littles. And there was nobody around him. He gets 18 on the play. When you're in that man-to-man -man pass defense and someone makes a mistake and doesn't go with their own man, the receiver is wide, wide open as Clark was. My but goodness. Again, Mickey is throwing the ball well. And you talked about Baylor coming back. Uh, well, this is a team with great character, great poise, extremely well coached. Minute 50 seconds to go. Mickey 16 out of 24, over 200 yards in the air now, but no timeouts remaining in the first half. The pitch comes back to Stockhammer. Stockhammer is yanked down by Linwood. And Baylor wishes that they had not used up their timeouts as prolifically as they did during the first part of this half. There's a minute and 30 seconds left, and they cannot stop the clock. So Stockerberg got nothing on the play. Back lost about a half yard. So it is second down and 11 coming up. Now we have a minute 14 seconds to go in the first half. Baylor trailing by one. Leland Douglas is back in as a wide out. Along with Horace Eights. Flags go down. Incomplete pass intended for number 23, Horace Eights. Garland Littles, number 20, had the coverage on the play. And there's a penalty marker on the field. Let's pause five seconds now to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is the Raycom Sports Network. KSAT TV, Channel 12, San Antonio. Okay. Merle Herman and Bud Wilkinson with you. The clock is stopped on the penalty, and it was called against. Baylor, we have a minute, two seconds remaining in the first half. Baylor trailing by one. And the procedure penalty marks off five yards against Baylor. That's somewhat inconsequential at this point in the half with the time remaining. Grant Taft talking to his quarterback, Tom Mickey, Cody Carlson, out with a groin injury. Tom Mickey has done a fine job. He led uh, Baylor to a victory over A&M last week. And last year, as you recall, they alternated. They started the season this year alternating plays even. Leland Douglas and Glenn Pruitt are the wideouts for Baylor. Sargent and Stockhammer are the running backs. Mickey trying to run away from Dean. Throws on the run. He just simply threw the ball away. No question about that. Mix Leland. Up, pardon me. Mix up in the backfield. 
Looked like they wanted to run a Statue of Liberty play. He wasn't able to make the connection, and nothing there. So that takes care of that play for the game, maybe, huh? They've killed the clock, though, and there are 55 seconds remaining. Tom Mickey waiting for the play to come in. Mickey, 16 out of 25, 232 yards and one touchdown here in the first half. And they'd like to gain enough on this play to put Jimerson again in field goal range. Eights and Clark are the wideouts. Right over the middle, it is completed to Clark inside the 20 at the 19. He caught the first pass of his career last week at College Station, and look what he's doing today, 24 on that one. We take a look again at the defensive secondary, and you can see them all here, and watch them drop back. And they're now starting to pick up their men. Looks like they're a zone this time rather than man for man. Clark is able to break into the middle, find the hole between the two defenders, and make the easy reception. 40 seconds to go in the first half. Swing pass to Stockhammer incomplete. That'll stop the clock with 35 seconds remaining. So now Baylor will have a chance to kind of regroup the forces with 35 seconds to go in the first half. The ball inside the 20 at the 19. Grant Taft sending his play in with Horace Eights, his wing back. And if you catch the ball in the field of play, it would be very difficult for Baylor to get the field goal unit on the field in time to kick the field goal. They'll probably throw the ball toward the end zone or to someone who can go out of bounds. Marty Jimerson has kicked two field goals today for Baylor, one of 29, one of 31. Second down. Incomplete, Matt Clark, the intended receiver, and Garland Littles had the coverage. They are really working on Garland Littles' side. He's a freshman, and that, I guess, would figure. I think he's getting a little more confidence. Uh, he doesn't look quite as tense as he did when the game began. Glenn Pruitt and Bobby Joe Conrad will be the wideouts. Sergeant and Stockermer will be the running backs. Clock stop, 31 seconds remaining in the first half. Paul Jones is coming to defensive end now for TCU. Again, the man is open, Bobby Joe Conrad. Conrad is brought down inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. The clock showing 24 seconds to go in the first half. And if that's a first down, it'll stop the clock. And the clock is stopped right now while the officials take a look. It is a first down. It is first down and goal to go for Baylor. So the Bears have come roaring back here after TCU grabbed the lead on the 60-yard touchdown run by Kenneth Davis. Got the ball on their own 20, and they brought it all the way down the field to the nine-yard line. First and goal of the nine. Mickey almost intercepted. Three men were on the coverage on Douglas, and Oliver just about picked it up. And you watch the good reaction here. Mickey drops back, looks to the outside, then drills the ball, and look at the TCU people close on it. That's the kind of reaction you need to get to stop receivers downfield. How can a team with 23 first downs in the first half against the opposition six be behind on one play? 60-yard touchdown run by Kenneth Davis. Talk about dominating the clock. Baylor has done that. Second down goal. Mickey flips it, and it is caught in the end zone for a touchdown by Glenn Pruitt. His third touchdown reception of the year. A nine-yard touchdown pass. So Baylor goes back in front, 19 to 14, with eight seconds remaining in the first half, and Marty Jimerson will come in to try the extra point. They were able to move down the field without having any timeouts remaining and still do a good job of handling the clock. One of the things that has really impressed me, Bud, is, is the poise the Bears have had in all the situations that they've been in today. Very well balanced and extremely well coached, and they've been very dominant offensively. So Jimerson, who did not, uh, in fact, did not travel for the first two ball games, we have a delay of game penalty call now against the Baylor Bears. Eight seconds remaining. Jimerson uh, came in, in fact, he got in his first ball game, the one that we did at SMU in the rain, and mm -hmm. kicked a field goal in that one, you might recall. Very well. 
Eight seconds left. 80 yards, 12 plays. Beautiful drive. Good mixture of passing and running the ball. Here we go for the extra point try with Jimerson. Clark Hood will hold. And Jimerson is perfect. So with eight seconds remaining, Baylor now leads it 20 to 14. And we look at the touchdown again. Mickey rolls this one out. It appeared that he could run, but I think he was fearful that if he tried to run, he might not get it to the end zone. But he doesn't get much pressure. Pass protection is excellent. He finds Pruitt curled into the end zone, hits him right on the numbers, and let's take another look at it. See him rolling to the outside. Now he kind of looks downfield. He's a little bit afraid to run, even though he could, because, again, of the time remaining on the clock. Pruitt is open in front of the defender, Jones, makes the reception for the score. Well, let's see what uh, TCU can do with eight seconds. What The only thing they can do is get a touchdown on a return. Can they? Well, it happens sometimes. They have to break it all the way in the clear. The clock will start when the TCU, TCU player handles the ball, and I would presume that Baylor will not kick this one over the end line. So Jim Wacker, who had a lead of 14 to 13, which he enjoyed for a little bit anyway. Momentarily. Yeah. <laughs> this game's not over, and it's not going to be over until the 60 minutes are up. Both teams are capable of moving the ball. Baylor's been more consistent than TCU, but TCU amazingly explosive. We'll have highlights at halftime. We'll have both bands at halftime, and that kick uh, kickoff is going to be returned by TCU, and the ball was kicked on the ground. I would think intentionally Linwood picked it up, and we have three seconds remaining in the first half. They didn't want any one of those guys like Clinton Brown or, or Jeffrey or Tatum to have a chance for the long return. So there's the story. Three seconds to go in the first half. The ball on the 25-yard line of TCU. Scarapa has come in as the quarterback. He was the man who guided TCU to that last touchdown. And, of course, Davis finished it off with a 60-yard gallop down the sideline. Scarapa going for it all. And out of bounds. Keith Burnett was the receiver, and the clock has run out, and we've come to the end of the first half. Johnny Thomas, number 41, had the coverage on the play, so Jim Wacker and his Horned Frogs will go to the dressing room behind by six points as Baylor put one on the board with just eight seconds remaining in the first half, going on an 80-yard drive, and Pruitt catching that touchdown pass. So we're at halftime. The score, Baylor 20, TCU 14. We'll be back with our halftime. We had rain this morning, but it's turned out to be a beautiful afternoon on this homecoming day. The only thing wrong for the grads of TCU, the Horn Frogs are behind in this game. They are 5-1 going into this one. The last time they were 5-1 was 1958, 26 years ago. They went 8-2-1 that year, lost only to Iowa and SMU and tied Air Force in the Cotton Bowl. That was under Coach Abe Martin. Frogs uh, national ranking, well... They've not appeared in a national wire service ranking since 1959 when they were 8th in the AP, 9th in UPI. They're currently in the top 20 in three polls of publications. Jim Mueller is going to kick off. Clinton Brown, Roscoe Tatum, Tony Jeffrey are deep. And it's Tony Jeffrey right up the sideline. They're trying to find some room, and he's not going to go anyplace. In fact, he gets near the nine-yard line, and he is dumped there by Dan Baker. I know that he wanted to try to make a big return, but it was not good judgment to try to return that one. Tony Scarapa is going to be the starting quarterback for the second half. Anthony Gully uh, played most of the first half. It was Scarapa who came in to engineer that big drive culminated by the 60-yard touchdown run by Kenneth Davis, which put TCU into the lead briefly, only to have... Baylor come back and march 80 yards for a touchdown of the lead. Here we go. It is Davis and Greg Baumkamp, number 76, the right tackle stops him after about a two-yard pickup. Those tackles for Baylor are really outstanding. All four of them are. Baumkamp, Mergenhagen, Grumbine, and Coriat. They've dominated the two offensive guards thus far. The only time the handoff's broken is when they have stretched it out and blocked those tackles in rather than trying to break inside of them. Second down eight. Scarapa, a senior from San Antonio's Clark High School. 
Garoppa throwing in the run, and it is caught by Keith Burnett, number 84, for a first down. Anthony Colvin, number six, the left quarterback, had the coverage on the play, and Scaraffa is moving the Horn Frogs with an 18-yarder. When he runs the sprint out pass, as he does here, it's a bootleg, really. He gets outside the pressure men. The receiver, Burnett, was able to defeat the cornerback, and they pick up a vital first down. They started from the about eight-and-a-half-yard line. Scarafa, a handoff to Tony Jeffrey, and Baumkamp is there to say hello to him. Jeffrey, the freshman from Gladewater. Oh, what a, he's just one of many great running backs that have come out of that area. Second down, for all practical purposes, 10 yards to go. And we haven't had uh, but one good execution, really, of the so-called Veer triple option, and that was the long touchdown around 60 yards by Davis because of the dominance of the defensive line of Baylor. Second down, 10. Uh-oh, Tommy Sheehan, number 71, the right guard of TCU, made a move a little too soon. When you've been uh, getting beat, he has by Morgan Hagen and Grumbine both. Uh, you get a little over anxious sometimes. Want to move out quick, get to him before they move. A lot of uh, bowl representatives are here today scouting both these clubs, uh, primarily TCU because of the 5-1 and one record. The Fiesta Bowl is represented, the Sun Bowl, the Peach Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, the Blue Bonnet Bowl, the Independence Bowl, and the Liberty Bowl. Not only that, but there are 10 pro scouts here looking on today. Well, the Frogs some, have drawn some attention. <laughs> there's some players out there that are going to be able to make it big in professional football. Second down after the penalty. Second down and 13. Scarapa looking. And going deep for Manus. Manus down on the 49-yard line of Baylor. Chased out of bounds by Johnny Thomas, number 41. Thomas Everett, number 27. A 26-yard pickup by Manus. Scarapas again, faking the handoff play, then rolling back to the outside. He doesn't have pressure at all, and he makes a perfect throw and a very fine catch. Another big first down for the Horn Frogs. Ronnie Thompson is coming to play that corner now. James Manus, a double All-America in track for two years, and here is Scarapa. Just going straight ahead on the quarterback sneak, getting down inside the 40 to the 39, close to a first down. Tom, uh, Thomas Everett, number 27, the weak safety, had to make the tackle. And the defensive tackles of Baylor are playing on the outside shoulder of the guards, which is why they've been able to control them to the degree that they have. That opens up the quarterback sneak if you can get a block on Hancock, the linebacker. The length of the football, they need to go for a first down on second down and a ball. Garoppa on the option, and the pitch goes to Davis. And Davis stays on his feet for the first down at the 35-yard line, and the flag goes down outside after the play was over. Ronnie Thompson was over there, number 20, and Davis picks up the first down. He's very strong uh, for its speed to be 5'10 and 210 pounds. He can still outrun anyone, and as he breaks the first tackle here, he picks up an easy first down on the play, and then you can see the unnecessary roughness as he was hit about three yards out of bounds, and now the official is marching it off. Boy, th this is the wrong time to get a major penalty for Baylor, though, with uh, TCU on the drive, and I'm sure Grant Tapp is thinking, hey, we don't need to give him any help. We'll take a look at the penalty again, and you kind of lose track, really, of where you are. When Davis has the ball, you're so anxious to get to him. You know how dangerous he is, and when he runs out of bounds, sometimes you don't realize you've crossed the sideline. It is first down. Scarapa. Jeffrey blocking for him. He goes to the back of the end zone. Manus is out there, and it's broken up on a double team. Ronnie Thompson, number 20, was back there on the coverage with Thomas Everett, number 27, the weak safety. So Scarapa throwing to the back of the end zone, incomplete, and it'll be second down, 10 on the 20-yard line of Baylor. Scrappa looks very poised. It looks like he's been playing all season instead of having Gully be the starting quarterback most of the time for TCU. Kenneth Davis, an 8.4 yard per carry average this year. You know how you get that? Today he has nine carries, 109 yards. Second down. Scrappa has a chance to run if he can now he finds, he finds it, it's uh, sharp in the end zone, he caught the ball. Thomas Everett, number 27, had the coverage on sharp, and Scarafa was just looking for anything. 
Randall was bringing the pressure. Here's Scarafa right on the sideline. No place to go, and all of a sudden he sees Sharp. And it's very tough on the pass defenders. Uh, when you have the play that long in action, awfully hard to keep everybody covered, but it appeared that Scarafa had no chance to get rid of the ball, and yet he threw it to a touchdown to Sharp in the end zone. Sharp's fifth touchdown reception of the year. And now, TCU has tied Baylor at 20. Ken O'Z, the junior from Amarillo, a chance now to put the Frogs into the lead. 12 minutes, 27, seven, 27 seconds to go in the third quarter. TCU takes the lead. 21 to 20, 91 yard drive, eight plays. Very impressive drive as we look at the touchdown play again. Scarafa faking, then dropping back. Nobody's open. He has to run to the outside. He's got speed enough that it appears to almost get the corner turn. Then he does not have room as the next man comes up. He throws it downfield. Sharp reaches for the ball and makes a truly sensational catch. You can see him hug the ball to his chest just as he hits down. Let's watch it one more time and see what a gorgeous catch that was. That's concentration on the ball for the touchdown. So Sharp, who had an outstanding day against Arkansas with 106 yards, is coming up with another one here today. 21-20 has won the battle of the statistics for the, for the second time today. Baylor trails. And right now, there's the hero, Dan Sharp, who just caught that 20-yard touchdown pass, his fifth TD reception of the year. Very impressive eight-play drive. 91 yards in 2 minutes and 33 seconds. Very Scar explosive team. Scarapa has done a great job off the bench today. And the Baylor coaches thought perhaps that he was out of bounds before he threw the ball. We're going to try to get another look at it after the kickoff. So John Denton will be kicking it off. Derek McAdoo is deep for Baylor in the middle. Here comes the angle kick again. Going out of the end zone. It'll be coming to the 30-yard line. We'll take a look at uh, the touchdown pass. Garafa forced to run to the outside. He gets past one man, and now he's very close to the sidelines here. Watch his feet, see if he was out of bounds or even close to it. And he clearly gets rid of the ball long, long before he hit the sideline. Legal play, great catch by Sharp. Vital touchdown for TCU. Well, Baylor, which has just had a fantastic show of offense today, now trailing by a point 70 yards away from the end zone of TCU. Stockamer gets the call. Stockamer running behind Jeff Palmer and Brian Kemp gets only a couple, maybe three at the most. Very quickly in the first half, uh, Baylor on their first drive went 39 yards before fumbling. They scored on the next one, 74 yard uh, drive. A field goal, then a 86-yard drive, another field goal, and then an 80-yard drive to a touchdown, and they have not punted the football yet. That's how dominant their offense has been. And they trail by one. That's football for you. Bobby Joe Conrad is split out along with Horace Eights. Sargent and Stalker are the running backs for Baylor. Eights in motion. Tom Mickey across the 35 to about the 37. Darren Turner, number 93, the junior from Sterling High School in Houston on the hit, along with uh, Kent Trammell, number 91, the 19-year-old nose guard, the sophomore from Corsicana. Did a good job of trailing the play that time and closing as Mickey turned upfield on the option. You saw the Super Frog, and there's the Super Frog. <laughs> An enthusiastic Super Frog. <laughs> <laughs> Super Jim. Third down, three. Great coach, great fellow. Pruitt and Conrad are the wideouts. Incomplete for Pruitt. So this is the first time, I believe, that Baylor has not come back. This is the first time they've been stopped on uh, three plays. That's correct. And uh, Sawyer, their putter, is one of the best in the country, but a big charge for the TCU defense and a very pleased home crowd. And you saw the man who led the charge, Kent Trammell, number 91, the nose tackle. So, the first punt of the day for Buzzy Sawyer, who is 44.6 for the year average. Kind of gets a wobbly kick away. Clinton Brown fielding it on the run and diving and holding onto the ball at the 26-yard line. Hang time of 3.86. 38-yard punt. And we'll be back.
right after this. Texas Christian University. Any rebroadcast or retransmission without the written permission of these parties is expressly prohibited. The announcers for this game were approved by the Southwest Athletic Conference. Our thanks to Maxie Parrish, the SID at Baylor, and Glenn Stone, his counterpart at TCU, for their cooperation in helping us to set up this telecast for today's game. TCU will have the ball on its own 25-yard line, driving for a lead touchdown on its last possession. Now with 10.57 to go in the third quarter, Grant Tapp and his Baylor Bears are behind in this game, 21-20. Anthony Scarapa at quarterback. Jeffrey and Davis are the running backs. Davis, not very much. Once again, very dominant defensive play. Kevin Hancock, the middle linebacker from Texas City, making the stop. Yard picked up, second down nine. Davis, the second leading ground gainer in the country and obviously number one in the Southwest Conference. Davis had, 600, uh, had uh, 861 yards coming into today's game. Swing pass to Davis. Davis looking for a block. Davis making his cut, using his speed. Pulled out from behind of the 44-yard line. Ronnie Thompson, Paul Mergenhagen, everybody was putting the chase on him. A 30-yard pickup on the pass to Davis. Man-for-man -man pass defense, and uh, as Scarapa stops, turns back to him, he's wide, wide open in the flat. He turns on the speed downfield. You can tell him pointing to the people, block this man, block that man, then I've got to cut it back and do it my own. The pursuit finally gets to him. Mergenhagen coming up from behind. Not too much on that one, a yard or so. Baumkamp stopping the play. Scarapa maybe two yards. Second about eight. The passing attack has been the key thing for TCU. They have not been able to get their rear offense consistently moving the ball, but their passes have been extremely effective. That's what Scarapa has done in this game so far. Very good. Five out of seven and 99 yards and a touchdown. And a big gainer a moment ago to Davis. Davis at the 40, being jarred all the way back to the 44 by Aaron Grant, the strong linebacker, number 43, and middle linebacker Kevin Hancock, number 50. Make that Jeffrey. Tony Jeffrey, a freshman from Gladewater. 523 yards coming into this game and a 6.4 average. Well, Bud, did, uh, did you ever have two running backs at... One had a 6.4 yard per carry average, another 8.4 when you were at Oklahoma? Well, we had two great ones on one team, and we had Tommy McDonald and Quentin Thomas. And, uh, they didn't average quite that much, but they had very good averages. Third down. Six. And this time it is Kevin Hancock coming with Paul Mergenhagen and Jack Hurd, and Baylor turned them loose. They came with the blitz in the cornerback. The wide man, the end, rather, keeps him from turning the corner. He's been able to get the outside every time, but you can see the end coming in, turn him in so quickly, and then the tackle made by the defensive end, Randall. The loss makes it fourth down ten as you look at Kevin Hancock. Gargus will kick it away. Thomas Everett is back deep for the Baylor Bears. Gargus looks for the sideline, and he's got out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. In the area of the 15, 16, 17, 18, they're still walking near the 20-yard line. Not too much on that one. But of 28 yards. And we'll be back after this from Jefferson Pilot Corporation. Exciting matchup. These same TCU Horned Frogs, the number one offensive team in the country, face the first place Houston Cougars, who beat SMU a week ago, to take the conference lead. That's TCU at Houston next Saturday, 11.30 a.m. Central Time on all these Raycom stations. Sawyer is a great punter. He kind of shanked that one, as you pointed out, but it hit the ground and took a very fine Baylor bounce, so he got great yardage. Coach Grant Tapp has switched his tackles again, bringing on the second unit as Davis goes up to the midfield stripe. Irvin Randall, 49, the defensive left end, and Hancock, 50, the middle linebacker, make the stop. Gain of six. Wisconsin hanging on, Coach. They sure are. <laughs> And uh, Boston College superiority beginning to show up against Rutgers. Georgia dominating Kentucky. Surprising game. Second down, four. Scarafa on the pitch, and Jeffries has to go to pick it up, and he goes out of bounds. They're going to lose on that one. Back at the 46-yard line. Ray Berry, the weak linebacker, number 57, 
and was over there along with Pat Corriette. See Scaraffa taking the handoff play on the veer option. He almost gets caught from behind, does get caught from behind, tripped up, and that's why the ball was wildly pitched. Jeffries goes for it. It goes out of bounds, four-yard loss on the play. So now TCU is faced with a third down and nine with 6.45 to go in the third quarter. TCU leading Baylor 21 to 20. Baylor led at the half 20 to 14. Here comes the blitz and Sarafa shakes it off, gets the pass away. It's almost intercepted by Ball. It was intended for Manus and Hurd was coming with a blitz. He did a great job to get rid of the ball here, to roll out to the outside, but again, the beautiful defensive play with the cornerbacks coming, he's able to get rid of the ball, but not to throw it, and they're going to have to execute that pass on first down rather than on third and long if they're going to expect to get the corners turned against the Baylor defense. Everett is back deep for the Gargas punt. So this will be Baylor's third possession here in the third quarter. This time he gets the hang time. And the fair catch is called for and taken at about the 13-yard line. And we have a flag in the play, however. 4.26 on the hang time. 41-yard punt, no return. And let's see if TCU was guilty of interfering with the reception of that punt. You have to give the receiver the opportunity to fairly catch the ball, and I think that one of the covered men for TCU was too close. Interference call, and that will be costly. So six minutes and 30 seconds remain to be played in the third quarter. TCU leading Baylor by a score of 21. A uh, Wacker wants to do right now is give Baylor anything because his defense has stopped Baylor in the last two possessions. They could do it one more time. They might have some confidence. Yeah, we can play good defensive football ourselves. Scarafa's done an outstanding job uh, coming off the bench today, taking TCU to elite twice. They now enjoy a 21 to 20 advantage with 6.30 to go in the third quarter. I want to thank our spotters today, TCU's Byron Mize and Jeff Sims, who's handling the Baylor board, and our statistician, Lee Friday. Nice job, gentlemen. Lee's had a lot to keep up with today with all the numbers that are being posted. Mickey will be the quarterback. Straight drop with time. Finally has to release, but Gerald Taylor was all over Broderick Sargent, and this time the linebacker who had the coverage on the back was right there with him. We read it well, did not have anybody extra rushing and they were able to stay with all of the receivers pass complete but very short game second down eight after a pickup of two paul jones coming into the defensive end he is replacing david caldwell jones a senior from eastern high school in fort worth horace h and bobby joe conrad are the wideouts for baylor john addicts up over the ball the pitch to stockamer trying to get to the outside and russell down Back on the 18-yard line by Sean Thomas, number 22, a senior out of Sacramento, California. Loss of two on the play. And again, this is a different-looking TCU defense here in the second half. What the, kind of adjustments have they made here? I think they're moving the nose man over so that it's an even front instead of an on front. Uh, got Trammell playing over a guard, Tommy playing over a guard, and... Uh, See where they line up this time. Yes, they moved them again. See the even front. Two men playing over the two offensive guards. Third down, ten. Threw it in motion. McGee, incomplete. Off target to Pruitt. Pruitt covered well by Sean Thomas, the left quarterback. And the fans react again for the Horton Hog defense, which has stopped Baylor three times in a row here in the third quarter. Well, the first half uh, went to the review one more time. Baylor never had to punt the football in the first half. And here they first three possessions, three punts. Did you suppose Jim Wacker's insurance agent is watching this game? I don't hope so. He's going to cancel his policy. Bad snap. Back of the end zone. And Miller gets the kick blocked as he gets it away. It's not going anywhere, but at least he got it out near the 30-yard line. Rolling up to the 32. And Mueller did a fantastic job of even getting that ball 15 yards out there and avoiding a safety or avoiding giving up the ball like at the one-yard line. I don't know how he came close to getting rid of it. 
You see the very bad snap. Sawyer tries to get back to it. The ball is bouncing on the ground. He doesn't get the handle. He looks up. And just before he's hit, he managed to swing his foot into the ball and did get a little bit of yardage. But now we have great field position for TCU. I beg your pardon, Buzzy Sawyer. Buzzy was the putter on the play, obviously. Davis out of bounds on the near sideline. Jackie Ball, the right quarterback, there on the coverage, along with Derek Turner, number 81. Jim Mueller, of course, is the field goal kicker. Buzzy Sawyer, number two putter in the Southwest Conference, doing a fine job of getting that ball out any place. Second down, 10 on the 32-yard line. And I think shortly we'll see TCU throwing the ball on first down. The Baylor defense swarming at them, expecting a run on first down. Second down, 10. Jeffrey and Davis to the running back. Intended for Jeffrey, who has not been heard from much today. Hancock and Subia back in that area defensively for Baylor, and it is third down. He was open by a step or two, but very well covered. No way the quarterback could quite get the ball to him. So Anthony Scarafa looks for the sideline. The play is brought in by Keith Burnett, number 84, the wide receiver. Third down, 10 of the 32. James Manus puts wide to the right side. To the left side is Keith Burnett. Scarafa, the pitch to Jeffrey. Jeffrey doesn't go any place. He, I don't know if he got to the line of scrimmage or not. Ray Berry, 57, the weak side linebacker. Johnny Thomas, the right cornerback on the stop, but a flag is thrown. And a beautiful, beautiful defensive play by Baylor, the entire defensive team. The indication, at least uh, from the jubilant purple shirts, was that the penalty will be against Baylor. Two Very flags were thrown. Terrible time to get penalty, goodness mm -hmm. sake. And it is going to be against the Bears. And a major penalty, 15 yards. You give the ball to the opponents on your own 32-yard line. You stop them, they're almost out of field goal range, and then you get a penalty and give them a first down. Baylor, 10 penalties, 90 yards. So a big 15-yard penalty has walked off. Ball of the 18-yard line, first and 10. Garoppa and TCU. The handoff goes to Davis. He's inside the 15 near the 13. Greg Baumkamp, 76. Kevin Hancock, number 50, make the tackle. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is the Raycom Sports Network. KSAT TV, San Antonio. Merle Herman and Bud Wilkinson with you. Didn't on the like TCU he, campus. Didn't look like he made anything on the play, and actually he made almost four yards. Good takeoff on the line. Second down coming up. Jeffrey down inside the 10 to the 9. Johnny Subia, the weak side safety, and Ray Berry, the weak side linebacker, on the tackle. Tony Jeffrey, 6.4 average per carry coming into the ball game. The freshman from Gladewater, 6 feet tall, 197 pounds. He just came in and won a job this fall. Manus brings the play in. Jack Hurd has come out. Aaron Grant has come in as they add another linebacker in the TCU, rather the uh, Baylor defensive alignment. Third down two. Let's watch. Davis. Touchdown is third of the day. Once again, we had a great reach block by Benson. Davis was able to break it to the outside and into the end zone. So Davis is having himself a big, big day. This junior from Temple, Texas, who needed before that carry 139 yards to break the 1,000-yard barrier, and he's got 124 yards in the game today and three touchdowns. And the extra point is added by Ken Ozee. It is now 28-20 TCU. And when we get the replay, watch the fine block by Benson, the right tackle. You can see him wipe out everybody. Also, a good block by the end. Davis now has clear sailing, and he can run through almost any one man, which he does, to score. A very frustrating first half for TCU, basically, as Baylor simply dominated the Horned Frogs. They, the Horned Frogs just couldn't get their offense going because Baylor's defense was so outstanding. Here in the second half, it has been the defense of TCU. 
Nine, uh, nine yard run on the touchdown play, 32 yard drive, took six plays to get it in. And a very costly, unnecessary roughness penalty that gave TCU the first down after Baylor had stopped them. So the Frogs and the Super Frog and homecoming here at TCU and a 28 to 20 Horn Frog lead here in the third quarter. Three touchdown runs for Davis, giving him 11 for the year. He's also caught one touchdown pass. Robert Williams and Derek McAdoo are back deep. John Denton, the senior from Dallas, will kick it off for TCU. And again, he's going to kick across the field. And it will be fielded by Derek McAdoo on his nine. He is out to about the 23. And the purple shirts are all over the place. A return of 14 yards. Chuck Dickerson, Dickinson, got the tackle on the play. Critical series for the Baylor team. Uh, they've got to get their confidence back on offense. They've been stopped three times in a row after not having to punt at all in the first half. Todd Connor has come in along with Robert Williams as the running backs. As Grant Tapp switches those two positions. First and 10 of the 23, Tom Mickey at quarterback. TCU showing blitz, they drop back. Handoff is gonna go to Williams. Williams with his speed trying to get to the outside, turns the corner and picks up some very valuable yardage. Billy Jones, the free safety, finally ran him out. Let's see where they mark him out of bounds. It looks like he's going to get 12 yards. That'll be plenty for the first down. The ball will be spotted at the 37. First down, Baylor. Well, he's got great speed. Uh, TCU did not play that defense pattern badly at all, but they simply lacked the foot speed to stay with Williams as he swept the end. Robert Williams, basically a return man, getting a chance to show his wares on the offensive unit now. First and 10 for the Bears. to Williams and Williams is stacked up near the 39. I believe that's the first down for Baylor in this uh, in the third quarter. That was the first first down they had made and it's on their fourth possession. So Robert Williams, the junior from Galveston. Jim Wacker's checking his board says, hey, wait a minute. Now, this guy, I don't think we scouted him in the backfield. Let's get a beat on him. Well, let's not let him turn the corner again okay. either. <laughs> Second down, eight. Two minutes, 27 seconds to go in the third quarter. TCU 28, Baylor 20. Connor and Williams are the running back. Tom Mickey throwing to the near side. Something went wrong there. Leland Douglas, that was a sideline pattern, and it looked like Douglas was going to run a fly or a post or something, but anyway, he was in the wrong, going the wrong direction. Well, he and Mickey miscommunicated as we take a look at it. You can watch the secondary dropping back. Mickey's ready to throw the ball, and he throws the out pattern as the potential receiver, Douglas, is running a fly pattern, so nobody close to the wall. Third down, eight. Clark and Pruitt are now the wideouts for the Baylor Bears. They picked up their first first down. Now they're faced with a critical third down. Third down conversions today. Baylor, seven out of 13. Mickey under a rush, pitches it inside. That is a four. He's going to Robert Williams, and Williams does not get the first down. Tom Sharp, number 42, the free safety from Alvin, gets the tackle. So Buzzy Sawyer will come on again. And a very critical defensive play as we watch it again. Mickey dropping back as though it's going to be a pass, and he flips it forward. It is a forward pass, the old shovel pass. Williams tries to break it up inside, but he can't get the corner turn, and he stopped short of the first down. And fourth down and four, and Buzzy Sawyer is in for the punt. He did a marvelous job a moment ago in avoiding a safety. Another bad snap, but this time Sawyer yanks it down with a one-hand catch and drills it downfield, where it is taken and fumbled a flag down on the play, a scramble. Baylor may have it, but let's see what that flag is about. The recovery is by TCU. A punt of 42 yards by Buzzy Sawyer, a line drive shot that didn't stay up too long. And Tommy Sharp being congratulated for picking up that loose ball. Marty Block has had trouble on those last two snaps a little bit high. 
<laughs> Sawyer's been an outfielder trying to get to the ball, but he's got such great poise, and he did get a marvelous punt away after another bad snap. We're down to a minute, 28 seconds to go in the third quarter. Let's see what those flags are about now. Well, illegal block. When a fair catch is called, uh, from a coaching standpoint, you just know he's got to catch the ball, and it hit him right on the numbers, bounced away, and fortunately, TCU was able to make the recovery, but the penalty is now being marched off, and it backs them up to the seven-yard line. So at the seven, the Horned Frogs of Jim Wacker, leading by a score of 28-20. to 20. Take it over, a minute 28 to go in the third quarter. At halftime, Baylor led 20-14. to 14. In fact, Baylor led throughout the first half until 2.59 to go when Davis scored on a 60-yard touchdown run, his second of the day. That put TCU ahead, but guess what? Baylor came right back to score with eight seconds left to grab the lead at halftime, and that's Davis out near the 10. Pat Corey at number 40, the defensive right tackle, gets him after a three-yard pickup. Corey at from Bay, uh, Baytown from Lee High School, Kenneth Davis closing in on the 1,000-yard mark. He's a great back. Strong, fast. Grant Taft, National Coach of the Year, 1974. When people were talking about Baylor getting out of the conference, they were talking about TCU leaving the conference. So Wacker arrives. Garoppa with time, throwing back up the middle, complete to Dan Sharp. The flex in at the 25-yard line, first down. Thomas Everett, 27. Jack Hurd, 16. The safety men make the tackle, a 15-yard pickup and a first down. When Scaraffa has time to throw, he's passed beautifully. And we take a look at the offensive line blocking here. You can see Randall, the defensive end, being handled very nicely by Ford, who was a tight end but stayed in the block. Scaraffa has plenty of time to throw the ball and completes the pass. Since coming into the ball game, Scaraffa has thrown for 114, 6 out of 10. And that is, this is Jeffrey out across the 30 to about the 32 for Kevin Hancock, number 50, the middle linebacker. Thomas Everett, number 27, the weak side safety, who leads the team in tackles, makes the hit seven yards on that one. Wonder if Jim Wacker ever relaxes. And not during a football game. And you very gotta, seldom off the field. You gotta love his energy. He has a, he has as much enthusiasm off the field as he does on the sideline. He's a fine coach and a great gentleman, and he deserves a new seven-year contract. Clock running down to end the third quarter. And we've got four seconds left to play in the third period. So TCU will have a lead. As the third quarter comes to an end, they're led by Anthony Scarafa, who's done an outstanding job since coming on. We'll be back with the fourth quarter of today's game after this word from your local station. This is 1,000, even with the threat of rain, but we just had a deluge again here in the Metroplex this morning. It's been raining for several days, and then lo and behold, the sun comes out. We're thankful for that. Scarafa goes to Jeffrey, and Coriat stops the play as Jeffrey was going for the first down, and then they have to call the six to see if he made it. He might have uh, done it without the sticks. He did. So Tony Jeffrey picks up the first down. And they're beginning to do a better job of blocking in the offensive line, and that makes the handoff plays off the veer able to pick up fairly consistent short yardage. One of the things that Jim Wacker did in the offseason, he really beefed up that offensive line. No changes made. They just put on a lot of extra weight and strength. Garoppa being chased. Throwing to the run. He's got Manus wide open. Manus down the sideline. It is out of bounds at the 21. Anthony Colvin getting him down after a 45-yard pickup. Thomas Everett over there to help out. And yeah, that's what the running fake will do to the defensive secondary. They all fire out as though it's a running play. Manus fakes the handoff, then rolls to the outside, moving to his left. A difficult throw, but he put it right on the money to Manus. Manus is wide, wide open for the big game. And those two guys did a great job getting him down. He's the big deep threat, twice a track All-American, anchored TCU's 800-meter relay team to the world's fourth fastest time ever. Right now, it's Jeffrey getting the call. Jeffrey running behind Young and Flynn. Hancock stops the play after a gain of a couple. Randall and Baumkamp helping out. I'll tell you, when you've got to cover that main or so, mm, you better have some help. Whew. No one man wants to try to do it. On the track team, he ran the leg of TCU's, and he just brings the play in, TCU's world record shattering mile relay team indoor. Best time ever, 3.0482. You know, something else about Maine is, too, Jim Wacker said last year he was the worst leader on the offense. This year he's one of the best. So it was just a question of getting the program turned around. What a pitch there by Scaraffa to Davis. Davis makes something out of nothing there with Johnny Scubia. 
Subia rather, getting him out of bounds after a couple. Anthony, or rather, uh, Kenneth Davis with 12 touchdowns this season, 11 by rushing, but those 12 touchdowns are second high to Jim Schwenk, who scored 20 back in 1955. Kenneth Davis and Anthony Jeffrey, or Tony Jeffrey, if you will. Pretty good combination in that frog backfield. Speed to burn. Mm. Third down seven, showing blitz. Davis, he would have had a little bit of room there, but Scarafa just simply got it too high for him to handle. He just didn't have time. The blitz paid off. It's now fourth down, and Ken Ozee comes on, the junior from Amarillo, to try a field goal of 30 four yards to be held by John Denton OZ is five out of eight in the field goal department he's got plenty of distance on this one and it's right through the middle a 34 yard field goal so three unanswered scores by TCU and the Frogs lead it 31 to 20 with 1348 to play put on the first half Tom Mickey at 275 yards passing I have a feeling that uh, TCU, TCU needs to put more points on the board if they're going to be sure of defeating this Baylor team. Long way to go. We know what uh, teams can do late in the game like SMU did to Baylor a couple of weeks ago. Conrad and eight are wide. Mickey throwing. Great catch by eight. Didn't get the first down, but he got eight big ones. Garland Little, number 20. The quarterback had the stop. A little fake of the normal handoff and the option before dropping back to throw and Mickey once again was right on target second down two nine minutes to go in the ball game TCU leading Baylor 31 to 20 the Baylor Bears with John Attics up over the ball Connor is the fullback up close to the eye and the ball goes to the tailback Robert Williams, number 22, and Darren Turter, 93, the junior from Houston, 265 pounds. Mismatch there weight-wise, but nevertheless, Robert Williams gets the first down at the 20. Two tight ends, and powerful formation. The running play was successful as they drove TCU back off the line of scrimmage. Ball is marked up near the 22-yard line. So the Baylor Bears down by 11. Still plenty of time, though. We know what they can do. They have proven that with their first half play as Mickey, play action. Wants the long one, and it is overthrown to Horace Ates. Looked like Ates was open on the play. He uh, didn't have the defender beaten very convincingly, but he did have a stride. Sean Thomas, 22, Billy Jones, number one, the left cornerback and free safety. We're back there on the coverage. Second down, 10. The clock stopped with eight minutes, 34 seconds remaining. The Baylor Bears had led at halftime by a score of 20 to 14. First TCU looked, a little, looked sluggish in the first half, but it was the Bears who made them look that way with their tremendous defensive play and the overwhelming offense of uh, Mickey throwing the football. Mickey incomplete. Great try by Todd Connor, the fullback, and Garland Little had the coverage on that pattern. It is now third down and ten for the Baylor Bears. And once again, Mickey had excellent protection. A lot of time to throw the ball, but the TCU secondary did a good job of covering. We mentioned that there are eight bowl representatives here today scouting TCU. And if, Bud, they were to win this ball game today, they would probably have a pretty good shot at a bowl game. I would certainly feel so. The uh, rest of their schedule is tough, but uh, they should win a couple of more. It could be a minimum of eight and three. Mickey, play action. Mickey, picked off and is intercepted by TCU. It is Gerald Taylor, the linebacker, bringing the ball back to about the 16-yard line. A 15-yard return by Gerald Taylor from Dallas South Oak Cliff High School. Taylor is so surprised to have this ball thrown to him as we see the double fake to the two running backs. Mickey throws, and Taylor is right there in the path of the ball. And he just slowed up here. There are a lot of blue shirts could have blocked for him, and he could have walked into the end zone, but he was so happy to have that ball. All he could see was goal line. 
He gets in front of Leland Douglas and gets TCU the football back deep in Baylor territory. Garoppa to Jeffrey. Jeffrey is inside the 15 where John Bright, number 46. The linebacker and Urban Randall, number 49. The defensive left end make the hit. It's been a kind of a quiet day for Tony Jeffrey, who also has been over the 100-yard mark today. Jeffrey has had uh, 12 carries now for 30 yards. Unofficially. Second down, eight. The big guy has been Kenneth Davis, who's over 1,000 yards for the season with his performance today. The pitch to Jeffrey. The timing on that was not good for Jeffrey. He had to wait for the pitch. He was covered by Subia, number 12, the weak safety, and Ray Berry, the weak side linebacker, 57. And Scarafa didn't pitch the ball as soon as you normally do. I think that he was late on the read to Davis when he got the ball out and finally made the pitch. The defensive team had adjusted. They were able to stop the ball carrier very easily. TCU now with three wideouts in the game. Manus is going to slot left, and Keith Burnett goes wide to the left. The tight end, Dan Sharp, is set right. Garoppa throwing, and there is Sharp. Sharp at the five. Bulldog down at the five-yard line by Jack Hurd, number 16. This strong safety it is first down and goal. Garoppa really is a very poised quarterback. There's the fake. He drops back. Sharp running the crossing pattern. He's wide open as the Baylor secondary was dropping back. Sharp is a good ball carrier, too. He was able to run forward after making the reception and pick up just by a narrow margin the first down. Dan Sharp wanting into that end zone. Caught one touchdown pass today. Has five for the year. First and goal to go. Jeffrey! Touchdown! His sixth touchdown of the year rushing. TCU leading at 37 to 20. And we are getting into that area that was predicted. More than 60 total points. As OZ adds the extra point, 16-yard drive, four plays. Took a minute and 31 seconds. The handoff again to the outside. Watch how he breaks this wide. Outside of the block of the offensive end on the handoff. It's much wider than it normally hits and it scores. TCU has outscored Baylor 24 to nothing here in the second half and has a 38 to 20 lead with 6.49 left in the game. TCU kicking off and Denton kicks it for that corner again. It will be fielded at about the three yard line and brought back by Derek McAdoo. McAdoo gets out across the 30 and has popped down at about the 31. He had a good lane and found the lane. Made the fine return. David Spratlin will get the tackle on that one, number 55. So there is the drive and Jeffrey, a five-yard touchdown run. Baylor did an outstanding job of controlling the big play by TCU. We're looking at the rushing yards here now. TCU has gained the advantage. Davis, of course, did rip off that big 60-yard touchdown run in the first half, and that's been the mark of TCU this year. Always coming up with that, that big, big play to put the opposition in a hole. Mickey stripped down by Kent Hamill, number 91, the nose guard. Uh, prior to this game, TCU had had 10 runs of over 50 yards, and they'd had 14 of over 30 yards, so they are a big play team with a running attack. Second down, eight coming up. Well, just uh, to go along with that, bud, Tony Jeffrey, a 53-yard and a 72-yard touchdown run against Utah State. Davis, a 59-yard TD run, 51-yard, 59-82 against North Texas. Gully, 74-yard touchdown run against Rice. That's just part of the big plays that TCU has come up with this year. Tom Mickey, they're closing in on him. He runs out of the trap, throws on the run, hits his receiver. Sean Thomas gets Matt Clark down, and Baylor has a first down. The ball will be spotted on the 48, a gain of 14. And a very good job by the wide receiver. You see him starting downfield here. He doesn't know the quarterback's in trouble. He stops. He starts back. And Lewis makes the catch because he ran a very fine pass pattern. Clark and Prue to the wideouts. Time remaining, 5.54. Grant Tapp and his Bears have a real problem. They're down by 18 points. They have been shut out of the second half. Mickey throwing incomplete off target to Glenn Pruitt, 25, and Littles, number 20, had the coverage on the play. 
And the TCU secondary may be burned again before the game is over, but they're playing with so much more confidence here in the second half than they did in the first half. And, of course, that came from the fact that they stopped Baylor the first three times they had the ball without a first down. Second down, coming up, 10 yards to go. The clock stopped with 5.45 left to play. We have played under sunshine. I wouldn't believe it after coming over here this morning in a deluge. Bobby Joe Conrad, 82. Horace H, 23. Are the wide out there in the slot to the left. Mickey is brought down by Gerald Taylor, the linebacker. TCU had the blitz on. The protection failed just a little bit. The, the receivers, however, were all covered, and it's an eight-yard loss on the play. You know, when Gerald Taylor was given the job of replacing Kyle Clifton, Taylor only a sophomore coming up that freshman year, he has really filled those shoes quite well. Mickey over 300 yards in the air. And two touchdowns. Baylor led at the half, 20 to 14. Conrad and Pruitt are split out wide. Third down, third down, 18. Mickey right over the middle and is intercepted. This time it is Sean Thomas who steps in front of the receiver to take the ball right off the turf. It was intended for Bobby Joe Conrad. And Thomas just sneaked in there and took that ball at the 47-yard line. So TCU has it leading 38 to 20 with 4.58 to play. And we'll be right back after this leadership going into the action up there today. First down for TCU. They've come up with two big interceptions in this half. They lead 38 to 20 with 4.58 left to play. They're shooting for their sixth win of the year. And Jim Wacker, who has promoted smash mouth football, has seen his defense apply some of that principle here in the second half. They've been very aggressive. Scarapa. Down the sideline for Manus. Covered by Johnny Thomas, number 41. Ball thrown behind Manus. Manus caught a 99-yard touchdown pass against Rice. Somebody said, uh, has anybody ever done better? No. Pretty hard to. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Texas A&M handily in front of Rice. Only the first quarter. Close game, Tulsa, Texas Tech. You can't have more... <laughs> You can't have more than Arkansas leading Houston here. You can't have more than a 99-yard pass because the yardage marker is the immediate yard marker ahead. Can't throw one to the end zone. Davis breaks the tackle from behind the line of scrimmage, gets back to the line of scrimmage. And Johnny Thomas, 41, the right cornerback, and John Bright, who was hurt in the TCU game a year ago and missed the rest of the season, was in on the tackle. So John Bright out of Colleen, a three-year letterman senior, Glad to be back in the harness against TCU and Scarapa. Says, I think we have a man hurt, or we have a man who needs an equipment repair. Clock running, 424 to go in the game. They're going to try to not have to take the timeout, which they do not. So they're right up to the line of scrimmage with 410 remaining in the game. TCU ahead by 18. Scarapa hit behind the line. Fine defensive charge there by the linebacker, Ray Berry, who was coming on the blitz along with Kevin Hancock. So they sent two of them. And the blitz worked to perfection as we take another look at it. Scarapa faking, but has no chance at all. Bingo, a seven-yard loss. And it is fourth down and 16 as Baylor calls a timeout. And Baylor will have three remaining timeouts. Three minutes, 54 seconds in this ballgame. But Wilkinson, this has been two this has been two games, two halves for TCU. Two completely different games. They were closer than you expected in view of the time of possession and yardage in the first half. But they were still a touchdown behind. And then here in the second half, they've been totally dominant from an offensive standpoint as well as a defensive standpoint. Two weeks from today, Raycom and the Southwest Conference have a dandy for you. The first place Houston Cougars of Coach Bill Yeoman travel to Austin to face the Longhorns of Fred Akers. It's the third-ranked Longhorns and the first place Cougars in the Southwest Conference. Two weeks from today, November 10th at 1130 a.m. at Central Time on the Raycom Southwest Conference Game of the Week. Robert Williams is back in a single safety as James Gargas will kick it. And I think we're going to get the big rush from the Baylor defensive team. It appears that they have 10 men along the line of scrimmage to try to get to the ball before it's kicked. And now Thomas Everett is going to be the deep man for Baylor. 
We have a flag down. We had movement by the offense. Not too much of a kick there, but a great roll. And it is finally fielded by Everett, and Everett gets it out across the 15, about the 17, but somebody moved with a purple shirt on. 45-yard kick, a three-yard return. Let's see what Baylor, Baylor's going to make him do it again. Well, in a funny situation like that, you point to the man that you're going to block, and the number of people that Baylor had up there, there was little indecision, and the lineman wanted to make it perfectly clear that I'm going to shoot for this guy. He pointed at him and was moving at the time the ball was snapped. So once more, TCU will kick the ball away with three minutes, 43 seconds remaining. That clock doesn't start until the ball's touched. So it's 38-20, TCU. The Horned Frogs would appear now, but you never know. It would appear that they've got their sixth game within the grasp here. Uh, the legal procedures to call. James Gargas will kick it again. It's averaged 41 yards. Matt Clark is going to go back deep now. The all-purpose football player for Baylor. Big rush again. Here they come. Gargas belts it, and Clark has to go back to get it over the shoulder. 25, he is yanked down on the 27 by David Spradlin. So we got another flag. This one is after the ball was handled, however. 38-yard kick, a two-yard return. Baylor's total offense for the second half. Here, here's, we're talking about the two different games. 95 yards, that's a clipping penalty against Baylor. 95 yards, total offense for Baylor in the second half. TCU has had 267. And the total offensive yards in the first half for Baylor were 368 yards. Mm. You've watched two games today, and this penalty will go against Baylor, and we'll be back after this word from the Jefferson Pilot Corporation. Tom Mickey... Cody Carlson on the sideline for the second straight week. Last year it was Mickey who led, or last week rather, Mickey led Baylor to a victory over Texas A&M. Straight drop. Breaks it up. Incomplete. Leland Douglas covered by Sean Thomas. Last year, Baylor won 56 to 21. This year, TCU 38, Baylor 20. Baylor, the number one team in the Southwest Conference in rushing defense, 113.3. They've done a reasonably good job of containing the rushing offense of this TCU team that is leading the country in rushing. Except for the one man. That's correct. <laughs> Davis, 167 yards. They've really shut uh, Jeffrey down pretty well. Second down, the rush is on. He gets that pass away, and somehow he completed it to Derek McAdoo, and McAdoo makes something out of nothing as Gary Spann, 57, the linebacker, finally got him down. But Mickey was able to avoid a long loss on the play as he was under a tremendous rush. Paul Jones was coming after him, number 82. A very poised play by Mickey. McAdoo, the safety valve receiver, and just with the nick of time getting the ball to him. Gain of six, it's third down four. Matt Clark, number eight, Horace H, number 23 are the wideouts for Baylor. They come into the slot left. Now they go to one setback. Mickey almost brought down from behind. Mickey, a first down, he's on the way. Maybe there are two men who could stop him. He avoids, no, he did not avoid. Garland Little, who got him with an arm tackle. Just got a hand out there to pull him down after a 44-yard gallop by Mickey, taking the ball to the 36-yard line of TCU. Man for man secondary when there's a blitz. Mickey drops back. Here comes the pressure. He finds daylight up the middle. And now everybody in the secondary is chasing the receivers. One man misses a tackle. It appears like Mickey might have it all the way to the goal line, but he's unable to get past the last man. First down at the 36-yard line. And Mickey back to throw again. Mickey throwing back to the near side. Incomplete intended for Broderick Sargent. I think he's a little winded after that last run. Well, Tom Mickey, we're going to add up his yards for the game. Uh, the most yards total offense in one game by a Baylor player was 405 by Buddy Humphrey against Rice in 1958. He had 18 yards rushing and 387 yards passing. So we'll total up Tom Mickey's offensive marks for the day and see what he has. Mickey's got 308 yards in the air. He's got 360 yards, or rather he's got 60 yards on the ground, 308 yards in the air. 
Second down, 10. Mickey throwing over the middle. This time completes it to Bobby Joe Conrad. Bobby Joe at the 20-yard line. Garland Littles, number 20. The coverage there. Another first down for the Baylor Bears. And it was a great catch by Bobby Joe. We have a Baylor man down on the field. Gain of 16 yards as Mickey goes to the sideline. Well, no surprise here, I don't think. Our Curtis Mathis player of the game is Kenneth Davis. Curtis Mathis will contribute a 19-inch full-feature color television set to Texas Christian University in the name of Kenneth Davis. At the end of the season, he will receive a plaque from Curtis Mathis recognizing this honor. What has he done today? 19 carries, 167 yards, three touchdowns, and one 60-yard touchdown gallop. And caught a touchdown pass for 30. And he's only a junior. <laughs> oh, check that. He did not score on the uh, pass play for a touchdown. Well, he didn't have to to win the honor. Well, things are kind of quiet on the field as we check the injured player. Jeff Palmer, who was filling in at the left guard spot for the injured Joel Porter today. Again, our thanks to Brian Mize and Jeff Sims, who was spotted for us today, and Lee Friday, our statistician. And Palmer is being helped off the field. We've got a timeout, 2.44 to play. TCU 38, Baylor 20. Conrad and Douglas and Pruitt are now in his wide receivers. Fake draw, Mickey going for the touchdown to Douglas. He was out of bounds and couldn't handle it anyway. Leland Douglas covered by Garland Littles. They worked on Littles pretty good in that first half, but he has done an outstanding job in the second half. As a freshman, he's developed poise, and he's going to be a very fine football player the rest of the season. Baylor's doing a good job of protecting the passer. We're getting a blitz almost every play by TCU, but Mickey still, most of the time, has ample time to throw the ball. Tom Mickey charging on toward the total offensive mark held by Buddy Humphrey. Second down, 10. Mickey being chased and fires away and it's incomplete. Joe Barrett, number 88, the tight end. Derek Turner over there in the coverage. And the entire Baylor coaching staff is screaming interference, interference. Screen pass, the snap was fumbled. Mickey did a good job of getting rid of the ball but didn't have time to throw it with any degree of accuracy. Third down, 10 on the 25-yard line. Most yards passing in a game, 387 by Buddy Humphrey. We talked about that a moment ago. So let's zero in once again on uh, Mickey, who's at 324 for Baylor. Third down, 10. Clark and Pruitt are wide. Whistle stopping play as that one got underway. Been a 25 second violation. I'm not sure the Taylor team lined up in the wrong formation.